Welcome and aloha. My name is Mark Shklov and I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we're going to go across the sea to the mainland and then inland across the Rocky Mountains to Denver, Colorado to talk with Miranda Vieira. We're going to talk to her about how law firms can thrive during the COVID-19 pandemic. Welcome, Miranda. How are you? Thank you for having me here today, Mark. I'm wonderful. And you're in Denver now, and that's a few hours difference uh, from us. Yeah. Uh, what time is it there? So it's 5 p.m. there. It's happy hour, okay. and it's snowing. <laughs> okay. All right. So tell us, Miranda, what do you do? What do you do? as a legal marketing consultant. What's, what's, what does that entail? How long have you been doing it? And uh, give us a general idea of, of what that is before we get into the de details of thriving in COVID-19 pand pandemic. Great, so uh, I'm the owner of Denver Legal Marketing. I've been in Colorado law for a little over 20 years uh, this year, which is kind of rough to say out loud, but, uh, I opened Denver Legal Marketing about four years ago to focus on solo and small law firms, uh, their marketing health, their business development health, give them some extra uh, consulting support. So uh, this, uh, my strategies are based on decades of experience with lawyers in business to business and also business to consumer practice areas. Uh, I run a remote team from my home in Colorado and uh, Full service marketing firm. And your clients generally are, I, 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 it sounds like small and medium sized law firms and most of them in Colorado are, I mean, can you also advise lawyers outside the state of Colorado or do you do that? Absolutely. So um, my intention when I started Denver Legal Marketing was to work with solos and smalls here in the metro area, but uh, I quickly found out that there are lawyers with the same exact problem all over our country. And so uh, my client base is about 60 lawyers here in Colorado and uh, their practices touch six different states. So they uh, either have offices in, in other areas or are licensed in other areas. And um, a lot of this uh, is beyond just Colorado. It's just how law firms and lawyers can market their services. So yes, absolutely. I do work with lawyers from all over the country and also um, have been contacted by lawyers in Israel. I mean, this is a relationship-based business and it, it works similarly everywhere. Right. Okay, so things have changed quite recently and we are dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic and, and what have you been doing? How have you been dealing with it? And what have you found that law firms are confronting at this time with respect to the COVID-19 pandemic? And uh, what, how, what, 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 what have you been advising generally at this point? Yeah. Um, so part one of your question, I have been in the house for about, I don't know, 30 days, maybe 40 days uh, running my business with my two small kids. And so uh, when I speak to lawyers, uh, by phone, by Zoom call, through Microsoft Teams, uh, by text message, by email. Um, we're, we're all usually pretty much in the same boat. Everybody uh, is in quarantine conditions and trying to run their business uh, from their home. And oftentimes their kids are there too. So uh, the unique challenges that I have seen lawyers um, push through, and initially it was how do I run a law firm uh, on a remote basis. And, and now uh, what I'm starting to see at least this week is uh, what should business development and marketing look like from home. Uh, so now after the initial kind of um, pressure of how to pivot uh, from a law firm environment to a home-based office environment is kind of worked out. Uh, now they're wondering how do we, how do we pivot on the other strategies? Okay. And uh, have and so you've seen kind of the change in the practice of law by people going to their homes and, and having to 
to to practice out of that and generally speaking i mean is are there is how are lawyers reacting to this uh yeah. and what how are they feeling what what do, what do you sense or what do you get from from your contacts with lawyers yeah that's a great question so um i think i think i've been really impressed by the lawyers that i work with on how uh they have reacted to this crisis. I think this is a time when our country needs um, leadership and a lot of people look to the lawyers in their lives as leaders. And I have seen the lawyers uh, in my community and in other communities really rise to that challenge, helping people understand their rights right now, uh, understanding what their obligations are, understanding, um, you know, how to interpret the different, uh, you know, loans and kind of other sort of uh, other types of assistance that are coming out kind of in real time. So lawyers have a unique role right now of leadership, specifically thought leadership on how people should be acting and reacting in the times of this crisis. So uh, I'm pretty proud of the lawyers that I know uh, and seeing them kind of rise to the challenge. Uh, with regard to their questions of, of kind of what's next. Uh, I am hearing a little bit of nervousness, I guess. Uh, lawyers usually bill about one to two months uh, behind. So they have cash reserves right now. And in the spring, uh, the average law firm usually keeps about two to three months of cash reserves in general. So they'll probably be good through about summer. But where, where I'm really concentrating with my law firms is let's keep that business development pipeline moving. And so everyone is good in August and September and November. Um, let's just kind of keep the conversations moving with current clients. Um, how do we meet potential clients, things like that. So um, their law firms stay financially healthy during this uh, COVID-19 crisis. Okay, so uh, that's kind of a general overview, and uh, I have uh, several Hawaii lawyers have sent in some questions, and I'd kind of like to, with specific questions about specific things. So I'd like to kind of start going through those, if that's okay. Absolutely. Uh, and let, let's start with uh, Attorney Tred Eyerly, uh, who sent in th this question. How, basically, how to address clients who will be unable or unwilling to pay their bills or at least full bills. And uh, Tre uh, Tre Tread is an attorney with Damon Key, Leon Kupchak, Hastert Law Firm. Okay. So this is a question that actually has come up before uh, and, and has been presented to me as a marketing consultant. And so what I would assure your colleague is that, you know, Lawyers have every right to be paid just the same as any other professional services vendor. And uh, what I have been suggesting is rather than preemptively giving everybody just a, a discount or payment options or something like that, I would wait for your uh, network, your community, your client base to reach out to you and say, you know, I'm having trouble with these bills or wait until, you know, um, they are a week or so behind and then you reach out to them and then individually address what sort of uh, flexibility your law firm can have with regard to payments. So maybe you will accept um, credit card payments on an automatic draft of such amount, you know, per month. Maybe you are going to start moving your law firm toward um, payment tiers rather than an hourly uh, commitment. So whatever sort of flexibility that your law firm is willing to do, I would suggest um, using this as really an opportunity to connect with your clients, get on their level and figure out how you can still uh, maintain a relationship with them and still be paid for the services that you've been, that you've provided. Okay. Maintain the relationship. Yeah. Uh, attorney Dick Mosier of the Denton's law firm uh, asks any suggestions for best use of social media conversations uh, it seems to be an entirely different communications process what are your thoughts so so i agree uh he has really 
uh, called out a big issue that everyone's dealing with right now. Uh, because these, uh, I, I assume he's talking rather than just social media calls, just uh, video conferencing. This stuff can be a big mess if you've got people that aren't used to uh, handling these types of remote meetings. And so what I would suggest is these run similarly to how your in-person meetings would. Um, so keep them professional. I would suggest an agenda. I would suggest a hard start time, um, maybe a break period put into an hour and then a hard end time. I would also suggest opening up all of your uh, Zoom meetings or Microsoft team meetings with ground rules. So, um, you know, in this call, we will, will have these two presenters. Everyone else needs to put their microphones on mute uh, or ask your questions uh, in this amount of time that's provided for at the end of each segment, or maybe ask your questions in the chat box and we'll address them then. So uh, really just kind of laying out what the expected behavior for these Zoom calls is probably the easiest way to control the chaos. So yeah, be prepared is what I hear you saying. Get prepared and send it out, let people know what to expect. So the expectations are there. That's a really good, I like that. That's a good suggestion. Um, okay, one, I think one more question before our break. Hawaii Law School Dean Emeritus Lawrence Foster asks, you know, law offices deal with a great deal of documents. Some need to be notarized. <laughs> you know, what do we do? Can we notarize without the client being in front of my notary? I mean, uh, how, how do you deal with that? Yeah, this is uh, a question we've been dealing with out here in Colorado uh, pretty much in real time. And each state is different. Uh, but I did check on what's allowed in Hawaii, and it does look like your governor recent, recently passed uh, some sort of uh, initiative that allows for audio and visual tools like Zoom to be used. Uh, but it looks like the person signing the document has to be in Hawaii. P probably the notary has to be in Hawaii. Um, but they have had a little bit of flexibility uh, when it comes to notarizing documents, especially, you know, documents that require wet signatures like wills and things like that. Um, so I would assume that uh, any law firm that requires documents to be signed is going to utilize technology right now, including, you know, DocuSign uh, is, is a great software uh, program that helps you figure out uh, who has signed what, when they signed it, when they received it, and then uh, figuring out maybe with your court reporting firms or um, some other legal services vendor how you get that third party uh, in the Zoom room, on the Zoom call, uh, to make sure that documents are being uh, properly notarized uh, in this remote environment. You know, that, and that's good advice. In other words, check what the rules are because the rules have changed. The rules of this game okay. have changed. And so I just like you checked what's going on in Hawaii, uh, we got to do that ourselves. So, okay, all right, I get it. That, that's very good. Um, we, we have some more questions, but we're going to take a one minute break right now, uh, Miranda, and we'll get back in one minute after the break and start on questions again. Thank you. Sounds great. Aloha, I'm Lillian Cumi, host of Lillian's Vegan World, the show where we talk about veganism and the plant-based diet located in Honolulu, Hawaii. I'm a vegan chef and cooking instructor, and I have lots of uh, information to share with you about how awesome this plant-based diet is. So do tune in every second Thursday from 1 p.m. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back. We are with Miranda Vieira, a legal marketing consultant in Denver, where I understand you've had some snow recently. Miranda, is that right? 
Yeah, spring is our worst season for this. Okay. Well, I'd like to resume some of the questions. Next question we have uh, from University of Hawaii law professor Connie Chang. And her question, really good questions. Are there any specialty areas of legal practice that seem to be affected more or, or less by the COVID-19 mm -hmm. pandemic? And, and if so, you know, what is your advice to pivot in these areas one way or the other? And how can lawyers market in these areas without appearing to be you know, too opportunistic, taking advantage of bad times? Yeah, I, oh, so those are, so those are great questions. I think the first one, um, which, which practice areas are being affected a little bit more right now? Um, it depends. So I am seeing major spikes in practice areas such as, uh, you know, trust in estates, people are, are starting to shore up their wills because the future's a little bit uncertain right now. Um, I'm seeing spikes in uh, criminal defense right now just because um, there are issues related to small business loans and people that have a criminal past. Uh, there are also early release issues um, given the COVID-19 uh, pre uh, presence in jails. Um, family law, how to, uh, you know, co-parent in, um, you know, a situation with two homes during this quarantine. On the business side, I'm seeing a lot of business lawyers really put out thought leadership right now uh, to their clients and their, to com their community proactively. People have a lot of questions regarding contracts and, um, you know, enforceability of different aspects of contracts. And they also have questions regarding their, their business interruption insurance coverage. Um, so I have seen the majority of law practices Law practices actually stay steady right now. Uh, again, people need their they need their lawyers right now because things uh, are kind of out of whack, and lawyers uh, are usually able to guide them to a place of certainty and understanding what their requirements are under the law, what relief they might have. So, people people need their lawyers right now. Um, so, with regard to pivoting. Uh, I am thinking that um, lawyers that are that are marketing and kind of business development savvy are, aren't really looking at right now, but kind of looking at the COVID-19 crisis as a, as a whole, almost as a five to six month uh, period of time. And um, when it comes to pivoting, we start to talk about recession marketing. So even after maybe our daily lives get back to normal, I think people will be a little bit more concerned with how they, they spend their money. And that's going to include how they consume legal services. And so savvy law firms are looking at flexible uh, payment arrangements and tiers, you know, tier three different tiers for their services through packages and, and things like that. So um, that's how people are pivoting. And then the final one was uh, how not to seem opportunistic, which I agree with. I think we are in a place right now uh, where a lot of people are are uh, in economic pain. Some people have lost family members. Some people, I mean, yesterday I wasn't able to spend uh, the holiday with my grandparents. Uh, I think all of us have experienced loss and grief uh, in the past you know, six weeks or so that we aren't necessarily sharing with everybody. And I do think that lawyers and law firms looking to market right now need to be uh, understanding of that. So what I would consider is rather than looking at uh, the next couple of months as, as a marketing opportunity, I would really look at it as a way to um, push out your thought leadership. Uh, you can do that through writing, uh, webinars, you can do it through hosting you know, town halls, um, just kind of being a leader in your community and sharing things uh, that you know. And if people have questions that are not in your practice area, I would, I would encourage lawyers to become connectors. You probably know lawyers that practice in, you know, family law or an employment law or some other area that you don't, uh, that maybe somebody in your network could really use their help. So I think marketing right now and business development looks, looks different.
Okay. And, and I hear you also saying what you kind of said at the beginning is that people need lawyers and you're not, you're, you know, do it, do help people. And so that, that's good. That's good. Uh, you know, the people need help and lawyers can provide it. Uh, attorney Dick Mosier, his next question uh, was uh, basically, you know, within the, the office, how do we compensate for office interaction from walking around, going to lunch, water cooler conversations that we, we no longer have? Yeah. So I think this is a great, this is another great question. So, so here's the thing, we're all separate right now, but, but we are kind of uh, connected, if that makes sense. Uh, we are finding connections with people by email and we're finding connections with people through social media and um, text messaging and, and things like that. So uh, that's really what I would tell you how to preserve those connections in your community at your law firm right now in, in the quarantine environment is um, you might need to actually set it on the calendar of we're gonna talk for 15 minutes every other day and just and just have a team meeting or a powwow or something like that. Uh, I've seen unique things coming out of law firms of, you know, let's let's see your pets, you know, and sometimes pets show up on the Zoom call or, um, you know, they'll have themed Zoom calls and things like that. So I think you can still have an authentic connection with the people that you work with. Um, I think it's just going to have to be a little more deliberate than it normally would. You're not gonna pass them in the hallway and it might ha actually have more meaning because it is more deliberate. Right. All right, uh, Dean Foster's next question. Yeah, again, kind of similar. Lawyers do a lot of physical networking, Rotary Club meetings, nonprofit boards, giving talks. How do one maintain those connections and still practice social d distancing? Yeah, so this is, this is an excellent question uh, because it really goes to the heart of what does business development look like for lawyers right now? And it is exactly what what uh, what I've been describing. It is showing your thought leadership in a different way. And so you still can um, go to those Rotary Club meetings. You can attend their webinars. You can engage with their uh, their community members and, and share your thought leadership. Um, you can attend board meetings. All of the ways that you uh, have engaged with them in the past, it's just gonna, it's going to have to be in a, in a remote circumstance. But that being said, it's, it is easier to kind of um, not attend these things because you, you feel like you won't have kind of the bang for your buck that you would in person. But I would actually encourage the opposite, uh, attend more because uh, we have less interaction. And so we need to make more use of the time that we have in front of these people uh, just to remain relevant and remain top of mind, which is basically what you would be doing if you were in a room with them uh, at, at a meeting or a board meeting. So yeah, what I hear you saying too is, is just do it and do it, you know, do a lot of it. So, do a lot uh, of it. Uh, uh, Connie Chang uh, ha has uh, uh, another question and uh, it goes right to the heart. I mean, you know, you're, how much is all this going to cost? Yeah. How much, is, uh, how much does legal marketing, servicing, and really what you're doing is coaching. How does it, how much is, is it cost? So it depends. So um, my marketing, my marketing firm customizes everything that I do for each of my clients. I charge uh, similar to a lawyer. I charge hourly, uh, except I charge in 15 minute increments, which allows me to build in a little bit of client management, uh, social media work and kind of bigger projects for, for marketing firms are usually charged on a flat fee. And I do that same thing as well as kind of web design. And, you know, if you're looking for a brand new website, those things are usually flat fees. Um, but I think that Connie brings up an interesting point, and this is something that has slowly started to kind of come into uh, my world of what if somebody needs just kind of a, an in the moment um, marketing, marketing strategy just for the COVID-19 process. And, and my guess is that would be, it would be probably about two to three hours worth of work. So not, not a ton of work, 
um, and also not a ton of detail because we're not talking long-term, uh, you know, goals and kind of, uh, you know, long-term goals of the lawyer and the law firm. So I think you could probably get away with under five or six hundred dollars for um, a short-term marketing plan that will hit hit you know um, digital marketing, social media marketing, updates to your website, and then also how to um, stay relevant in your community through cause marketing or maybe some of the other options that you might have. Okay, so so contact you and. We've been broadcasting your contact information. You can give them some type of an estimate at that time too, I assume. Sure. Um, yeah, I'm happy to help. And, and okay, uh, uh, Dean Foster has uh, one more question. Let's. What, did, okay. what do we have from Dean Foster? Okay. All right. Well, this is a good one too. I, I like this. Justice delayed is justice denied. Our state and federal courts are make in Hawaii are making heroic efforts to maintain some critical functions, but so much is on hold both in civil and criminal courts. What can we do? So I, here, I, love this yeah. question. I love this question and here's why. I think this is, a, again, an opportunity for lawyers to really show leadership. So uh, some of the uh, options that they might normally have of taking things to court, a day in court, getting in front of the court, that's not there. But you still have ADR. You still have you know different forms of mediation for dispute resolution. So justice might not be able to be in front of the court system right now but you probably can uh bring your client to some sort of agreeable resolution if you look into the adr system um when it comes to criminal cases and kind of family law cases that might you know necessitate a judge again mediation adr can probably um can probably be a great solution uh, you know, as well as just kind of creative problem solving with the other attorneys involved. So thank you. So, so look, look for options. Don't just give up. Try to find what no. you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No. Now, now we got, we have one more question from Professor uh, Connie Chang. I'd like to put that up. Okay. Uh, she read another article you recently wrote about law firm branding and using tokens. I, I, I kind of like, like this one, even though it's uh, not dealing directly with COVID-19, but it, it, it talks about marketing. And she asks, yeah. you know, how, how do you keep your, your name in front of people? And then she asks, what are some of your favorite tokens? Yeah, I, I love that idea. So, um, you know, right now, mail, regular mail is one of the only ways that you can kind of exchange those swag items that promote your law firm. Maybe they have your law firm name. And so when you're looking at buying these things, my favorites always are the ones that are, um, they have utility. So, you know, the phone chargers that, you know, might be branded with the law firm name, but they actually work to charge multiple devices when I'm at the airport. Uh, I've seen law firms um, create pop sockets that have uh, their contact information and even the, the um, types of cell phone. Uh, it's like where you can hold your your credit cards and your license and things like that. Uh, I've seen high-end clothing come out of law firms, you know, North Face type vests with the law firm name on it. Uh, I think the biggest thing is to not, is to not spend your money on junk. Um, you want to make sure that people will actually use it uh, and they won't just throw it away or give it to their kid uh, when they get back from the conference. You want to make sure that it's it's of quality. This is this is an extension of your brand. And so keep keep marketing, I hear you saying, and looking for opportunities even at this time. Uh, yeah. And exactly. if somebody if, if, if somebody wants to contact you, um, they can just Get a hold of you in Denver. What your your? I think we put up your contact information. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you know, LinkedIn is probably one of the best ways to stay up to date on the thought leadership that I'm putting out. Uh, so certainly find my LinkedIn profile. It's just my name, Miranda Vieira, and uh, you can find all of the information that I'm putting out there on how lawyers can pivot on their marketing strategies right now. Okay, and uh, just for our audience to let you know that we will uh, hopefully, we got a lot more questions, but we're out of time. 
So we'll <laughs> we'll try to get um, uh, some of this on uh, Miranda's uh, LinkedIn and other uh, uh, published locations so that uh, we can read it. And we'll try to get that out there soon. Absolutely. And and thank you, Miranda. I appreciate your advice. And nice to meet you. Nice to talk to you. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, see you in Hawaii one day. I would love to lecture in Hawaii. <laughs> I'll thank you so much, Mark. I appreciate it. All right. Aloha, everybody. Thank you very much.